Fluticasone is a potent anti-inflammatory corticosteroid. This medication can also show vasoconstrictive properties. It acts by reducing the inflammation in your body. It is available as its salt, fluticasone propionate, under the brand name Flonase. This medication can be given to treat allergic rhinitis, which is commonly called hay fever. It is one of the allergic reactions that produces inflammation in the nasal pathway. This results in the development of a few symptoms, like a runny nose, sneezing, and itchy eyes. It also increases the water secretion in the eye, leading to watery eyes. It can be triggered by allergens or dust mites. It may also lead to coughing and decreased ability to sense smell. You may also have an itchy throat and itchy skin. Fluticasone is a corticosteroid that can be used to reduce inflammation as well as to reduce immune response. Therefore, it can relieve the symptoms of allergic rhinitis. How does it work? Fredericton is a potent corticosteroid. It has strong anti-inflammatory effects. This medication can reduce inflammation by inhibiting the release of mediators like histamine and cytokines. It binds to the glucocorticoid receptors located inside the cells in the nasal passages. Within the cell, it can activate the glucocorticoid receptors. This allows this medication to enter into the nucleus of the cell. Within the nucleus, they can interact with the DNA and they can bind to specific DNA sequences. They are commonly called glucocorticoid response elements. By interacting with these DNA sequences, it inhibits the expression of the genes that are involved in the inflammation. It suppresses the inflammatory mediators and immune cells. Thereby, it also reduces the immune response. One such type of mediator is the IL-2, interleukin-2. It is responsible for stimulation of immune response and subsequent release of inflammatory mediators. The IL-2 gene and its production are reduced by fluticasone. It also reduced the expression of other inflammatory mediators like cytokines and chemokines. Fluticasone also activates the anti-inflammatory pathways. Another property of fluticasone is the vasoconstriction. It has a direct effect on your blood vessels, causing them to constrict. This helps in reducing the accumulation of fluids in your nasal blood vessels. Therefore, fluticasone can reduce the nasal congestion and swelling that is associated with allergic response. How to administer this medication? Before using the nasal spray, gently shake the bottle, which gives a uniform distribution of the medication into the nasal spray solution. If you're not using this spray in a week, you have to prime the spray before starting its use. Press the bottle a few times until you observe a fine mist coming out of this nozzle. Then blow your nose gently to clear your nostrils. Then place the tip of the nozzle into the nostril and aim slightly away from the center of the nose pointing towards your eyes. Spray once or twice based on the dose that is recommended for you. You can repeat this process in the other nostril. After using this medication, wipe the spray nozzle with a clean tissue and replace it with a cap. It is available as a nasal spray at different strengths. The right dose depends on the type of spray you are going to use. Your doctor may recommend one or two sprays in your nostril each day, but it should not be used for greater than six months unless instructed by your doctor. What are the side effects of this medication? One of the common side effects of fluticasone is the development of headaches. It also produces epistaxis, leading to nasal bleeding. You may also have nasal irritation and nasal discharge. You may have a feeling of stinging in your nose. Few people may observe sore throat with use of this medication. You may also experience an unpleasant taste or smell due to the deposition of this medication into your throat or mouth. In order to avoid deposition on the throat, slightly tilt your head forward while keeping the bottle upright. This avoids deposition of the medication in your throat. While priming, you have to spray it away from your face and avoid its contact with your eyes. Fluticasone can also produce some blurred vision and halos in the vision. Precautions Use of fluticasone may mask acute infections. Since this medication is a corticosteroid, it can mask the infections and reduce the inflammation. It can mask the fungal as well as viral infections. It can also limit the response to the vaccines. Therefore, in the presence of untreated localized infections that particularly involve nasal mucosa, the use of fluticasone is not recommended. If any bacterial infection is suspected, use of antimicrobial therapies is recommended. 
Fluticasone is a corticosteroid and it reduces immunity. Therefore, there may be a high risk of developing new infections or it may worsen the existing infections. It may increase the risk of chickenpox and measles in people who are unvaccinated or immunocompromised. Another effect of fluticasone is on the wound healing. Since this medication can reduce the immune response, it can produce a delay in your wound healing. If you're having any nasal septal ulcers, trauma, or surgery, the healing rate is reduced with the use of fluticasone. Therefore, it is better to administer this medication after complete healing of these conditions. Even though fluticasone is used as a nasal spray, somehow a certain amount of the medication can reach into your body. On reaching significant levels, it can suppress the HPA axis, hypothalamic, pituitary, and adrenal axis. This is particularly more pronounced in younger people and pediatrics. Therefore, when you're withdrawing this medication, discontinue it gradually. When you are going to apply a fluticasone as a nasal spray, a small amount of the medication can enter into your body. This can be sufficient to produce adverse effects on your eye. Normally, corticosteroids can increase the intraocular pressure. Similarly, fluticasone nasal spray can increase the risk of glaucoma and cataracts in people. Fluticasone can reduce the growth in the children and adolescents. This is because of suppression of the HPA axis. Therefore, while using this medication for longer periods, any abnormal reduction in growth should be monitored. This can be established by measuring the height to weight ratio. If you notice it is not increasing as expected, it may indicate the effect of fluticasone on the growth of the children. This medication can also reduce your bone mineral density. This is particularly observed for long-term use of oral inhalation. This may have further increased by lifestyle factors like prolonged immobilization or use of tobacco. Family history of osteoporosis can also increase the risk of adverse effects on your bone with the use of fluticasone. Poor nutrition and advanced age may also reduce bone mineral density. If you are using a few other medications like anticonvulsants and oral corticosteroids, this effect can be more pronounced. Avoid using a few of the medications that affect the metabolism of fluticasone. Fluticasone is extensively metabolized in the liver by CYP3A4 enzymes. Strong CYP3A4 inhibitors like ritonavir, clarithromycin, itraconazole, and ketoconazole. And so many other drugs should be avoided with the use of fluticasone. These medications can increase the levels of fluticasone in your body, leading to enhanced adverse effects. Use of fluticasone nasal spray can produce a few of the local effects on your nose. It can produce epistaxis, leading to nasal bleeding. It can also produce erosions in your nasal pathway. In severe conditions, it can also produce nasal ulceration. In a few people, perforation of the nasal septum can also be observed. These are the few important things about fluticasone. Thanks for watching.